Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video, we're going to be playing with the Beauty and the Beast collection from Laura Cosmetics. I do have most of the pieces of this collection here today to play with. I did not purchase a lip gloss collection because I saw it and didn't really excite me and I was mostly interested in the eyeshadow palette, the blush palette, and the lipstick collection. I have swatches for you, I have a makeup look to show you, and I have my thoughts and first impressions on this collection right here. So if you would like to know more about this collection, then go ahead and keep on watching. So this collection was released by surprise on the Laura Cosmetics website. And it was about a week ago or two weeks ago, I'm gonna say when it was released and I was totally surprised. I didn't think that they were going to release a collection like this being that the movie has already been out for a little while now. So I think everyone was surprised when Lorac released this collection. When I first saw it on the Lorac website, I didn't want to purchase it right away. I wanted to wait a little bit because sometimes I like to watch other people's reviews when they receive the collection. I was pretty much inspired to do this video because of Tati. I love watching Tati and I love watching her videos and she released a video all about this collection, swatched everything and she tried it on. I was literally won over by her video because she posted beautiful swatches of everything. I wanted to see for myself if this collection was really worth it. So the very first thing that we have and I'm just gonna go ahead and just pick out whatever and just talk about it and just explain as I go and show you guys swatches as I go with it. The first collection piece that I got was the Beauty and the Beast blush palette and I'm not sure if there's an actual name to this blush palette. I saw this blush palette online. I thought it was beautiful. I only have maybe about two blushes by Lorac. I have tons of other kinds of blushes but Lorac's blushes are different. They're pigmented, they're very soft to the touch and they blend out incredibly well. So when I saw the blush palette I knew I had to have it but I wanted to wait on it till it hit the stores in Ulta and it finally did. This whole collection is available on Ulta.com if you guys are interested I will leave the link down below so you guys can shop and make sure you shop through Ebates first so you can get good cash back like I did. So this is what the blush palette looks like. It's so pretty, so gold and it has a lot of drawing on it. I think this is really beautiful packaging. It says Disney's Beauty and the Beast on the front and then when you open it up it looks like this. It's such a beautiful palette. I think it's really nice for travel. The palette did come with a film strip on it and as you can see the film strip has little roses written on it in pink which I thought was super cute. But you get four different shades in this palette and you get a really nice mirror. Now the mirror is a little bit wider so I think it's nice for travel. And on the mirror itself which I thought was really cute there is an emblem on it like it's written into the mirror. It says she was fearless and it's actually part of the mirror and I thought it was so cute. I'm gonna say this right now, this is one of my favorite pieces from the collection. It's so pretty and I love it. The shades that you receive from top to bottom are See Beyond, Fearless, Enchanted, and Rose. I love how they start light from the top to bottom. You get three blushes and one highlighter, which I wanna say that I use this highlighter on my face as you can see it and you'll see in the tutorial too. This shade called Fearless looks like a highlighter, but it also looked like it could be a blush topper, which on me it looks slightly dark, but I still applied it as a highlighter because I love the shade so much. I love that out of the three blushes, you get one matte and two satin blushes. When I swatched all three of these blushes, they're very soft. The pigment is out of this world. It's beautiful. It's very bold. You do have to go in with a light hand and also tap off the excess off the brush because I did receive some kick up when I put the brush into the pan of the blush. You get a little bit of powder kick up, but that doesn't really bother me because I'm used to the way Lorac creates the texture of their shadows and blushes. When you dab in your brush, you will see some kick up, so just tap off the excess before applying. The palette is priced at $28. Each pan of blush, you do get 36 ounces of product in each little circle, which I can't explain that. I don't know why. Now the highlight in this palette is a gold sheen metallic kind of highlight. It kind of reminds me of a wet kind of highlight, so you might want to go in with a light hand. You can wear this for every day, at least I would, and it just has a nice gold sheen to it. I really, really loved it. Again, you could apply this as a blush topper. Usually for deeper skin tones, this highlight would be amazing. But of course, for lighter skin tones, I think this gold highlight would be nice as a light blush topper. But of course, there 
there are no rules to makeup, you can definitely wear this highlight as a highlight or as a blush topper, however you wish. Next product we have are the lipsticks, and this is another favorite of mine in this collection because I went ahead and I tried one which I have right now. The shade I have on my lips right now is called Red Rose. Such a beautiful true red color. And these lipsticks actually are a luster formula. The formula of these lipsticks are actually very, very creamy. So I'm going to go through every single lipstick shade so that you can see which one it looks like. The first shade is True Beauty, and this is shown as a nice light peachy kind of pale pink. Red Rose is the one that I'm wearing right now. It's such a true red, but it feels like, it looks like it has like that blue tone in it to make it such a beautiful Oh my gosh, and these swatch so beautifully. They're so creamy, I love them. Next shade is Believe Belle Eve. The way that this is spelled out is so cute. I absolutely love it. And it's like the perfect everyday mauve kind of shade. I love colors like these. These are my favorite tones. Next one is Très Chic. And this one actually came to me with a busted corner. <laughs> the corner of the lipstick has been smushed. I don't like that, but that's okay. We can make it work. This one's a nice brown tone kind of shade, a little bit darker than the rest of them. And then the last one is called Sivois Fair, which I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is such a beautiful nude. And this one has like a little bit more of a darker peach in it. The formula actually looks like a luster kind of formula. It's shiny, but they're natural looking, so it's not gonna dry down to a complete matte like their original formulas of their lipsticks are. They're so pretty. This collection goes for $36. And you get five full-size limited edition lipsticks. By the way, did I mention this collection is limited edition? Why do they get us with limited edition products? Limited edition products are the best products, but they're only around for a limited time. How is that? So if there is one thing that you need from this collection by far, I recommend you get the lipstick collection because it's just so beautiful. Their lipstick collections are always the biggest bang for your buck because you get five full-size lipsticks for $36. And then last but not least, you have the eyeshadow palette, which is called Tale As Old As Time. This is such a beautiful name to put on this palette because I automatically think of Mrs. Potts when this is said. A tale as old as time when she's singing the song. So this is the eyeshadow palette right here. It's like a book. It's got its bookmark string and everything by Beauty and the Beast. The packaging is cute, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of thick and chunky. And I'm not exactly sure if this would be good to put away with your other palettes because it's actually thick and chunky. I wanted to try them out for myself, so I did buy the collection online at Ulta. It comes with a two-sided brush, and then it comes with a mirror. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not gonna use this mirror. I don't see myself using this mirror because it's kind of small, so I don't think it's good enough to use because I like a bigger mirror. I like bigger mirrors where I can see what I'm doing. And maybe if you take this for travel, maybe you can use this mirror. But I don't see myself using this mirror because this mirror is a little bit small and limited. And I'm dropping all the lipsticks over here. Yeah, this, the mirror is kind of small and limited. I don't see myself using it, but it, it adds a nice touch to the eyeshadow palette. And then you have the eyeshadows right here. I don't know if you're thinking the way that I'm thinking, but when I saw the eyeshadows, they seem kind of out of place in color coordination. I'm so used to seeing palettes that have the different kind of colors, but in the same color range so that you can use them and they can match to a certain look. There isn't really a guide to where you need to go to choose which eyeshadow you want to go with what colors you already have on the eyes. I'm gonna go through the eyeshadows really quickly just so you, can, you guys can see the colors and the swatches. The first shade is called Dream It. Next shade is Timekeeper. Then we have B, well you know what, I wanted to say Be Our Guest, but it's Our Guest because I'm so used to hearing Lumiere saying Be Our Guest, Be Our Guest, Be Our Guest. Next shade is Impress. Then we have Beast Mode. Then we have Enchanting, Swept Up, Look Beyond, My Castle, Chip In, Romance, Spellbreaker, Inner Beauty, which is my favorite pretty shade, Tea Time, TikTok, and Real You. Now some of these are mattes and some of these are shat shatins. 
Some of these are mattes and some of these are satin finishes. And then there's maybe about one or two that have a matte base but with a glitter in it. So yeah, that's the entire eyeshadow palette. Now I do have to say this palette is priced at $48 for 16 shades. $48 for 16 shades, it's a little bit steep and I'm pretty sure it's because of the packaging that that's why the price is so high because a lot of other Lorac palettes are priced at $42, $38 and you get the same if not more shades. Do you need the Beauty and the Beast collection in your life? I will let you be the judge of that. It all comes down to preference in my opinion because sometimes some people prefer package over eyeshadows something's going on outside I can hear the sirens if there's one thing that I highly 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 suggest that you get your hands on is the lipstick palette or the blush palette you do get a lot more bang for your buck the eyeshadow palette is nice but in my opinion the eyeshadows may be nice, but the packaging is what is pretty much coming out of this collection piece, so that's why it's priced a little bit higher. So I don't know, it all depends on preference because I'm still playing it out, I'm still trying it out for the first time. I did this eyeshadow look which I actually like a lot. At the same time, there might be dupes for these eyeshadow shades in another palette. But of course, the packaging also gets me sometimes because that's how I am sometimes. The packaging tends to pull me in. But if you're looking at quality as eyeshadows, I'm not worried about the eyeshadow quality because when I did this makeup tutorial, I noticed that some of the shadows are pretty pigmented. And even though they have fallout, they can be built up. It all comes down to what you want and how much are you willing to spend. So now that we've moved on to the swatches and talk about each of these pieces of collection, let's go ahead and move into the makeup tutorial. So if you would like to see how to get this look, then go ahead and keep on watching. So my face is already almost done. I have foundation, concealer, setting powder, and brows. So I'm looking a little bit crazy. I'm super excited to be trying this collection out for the first time. Now since I've already finished my foundation and concealer and powder, I do want to bronze up the skin. This collection doesn't have a bronzer, so I'm just going to use my own bronzer. For bronzer today, I'm going to be using a product that I've been obsessed with lately, and it is the Pixie Beauty in collab with Mariam. And I've been loving this palette a lot. I've been taking it with me almost every day to work, and I've just been bronzing with this shade mostly. This shade right here. I feel like for my skin, it actually looks nice because it's warmer and I feel like my skin tone just wouldn't look so great with a cool tone bronzer. If you see a little shadow right here is because I have a little zit right there camping out just hanging out and I've covered it up as much as I could and I still feel like I can see a shadow on my face. So just ignore that. You can go in super dark really quickly if you apply too much so I have to tap it off but it's very pigmented for a bronzer. Alright, so the first item I'm going to be using is the Beautiful Blush Palette. I'm going to go ahead and go in with Enchanted to start. This one actually looks like a matte shade of blush. It's actually pretty pigmented when you dab your brush in it, so I like to tap off the excess so it's not too much. I think this shade would be the perfect everyday rose kind of shade. It's so pretty. I'm barely dabbing it and you can definitely see it's pigmented. These blushes are actually pre pretty pigmented. That is really beautiful on the cheeks. I'm going to take a little bit of rose, which I think is like a satin finish, but I'm just going to apply just a little bit. Oh, wow. I always like to blend it back. This, this one's definitely pigmented. Oh my goodness, that is pigmented. I'm going to be taking my large stippling brush and blending it out because I put a little too much. It's pretty pigmented, so you want to make sure you tap off your brush every time you apply. So far, I am pleased with this palette. I think it's beautiful so far. I want to try the gold highlight and see how that looks on the cheekbones. There is a little bit of kick up when I actually put my brush into rose, but it's just a little bit of kick up. It's not too crazy. I'm going to take my favorite Morphe M501 highlighting brush and just take some gold. And you can see a little bit of a sheen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, it looks really pretty. I like it. It looks like a sheen. It's not glittery at all, and it looks like a metallic kind of sheen. It's really pretty. That is so pretty. <gasps> this kind of looks like a wet kind of formula, and you can definitely dial it up. I'm sure that if you want to go just a little bit light-handed on it, it could be subtle wearing, and you can just wear it pretty much every day. At least I would. 
That is so stunning. Oh, and the formula feels so soft when you swatch it with your fingers. Those are the three shades right there. And this one is Sea Beyond, which I didn't get to use on my cheeks, but I have no doubt that these are soft, pigmented, and just look beautiful on the cheeks. So first impressions on this blush palette, huge thumbs up. I think it's beautiful. I think it's definitely a necessity if you don't have very many blush collections. Not like I do. I do have a ton of blushes, but because of the packaging and because of the shades, I really, really wanted this blush palette. And yeah, if you're a makeup lover like myself, you'll definitely want this palette. And if you love Beauty and the Beast, even more. Alright, so next I'm going to be playing with the eyeshadow palette. When I saw the swatches on Tati's video, I was really wowed by them and that's what pretty much convinced me on purchasing this palette because the eyeshadow swatches were amazing. But I do want to try these on the eyes. The first matte shade I'm going to be taking is Chip In. It's a beige color shade in the palette, pretty much the lightest shade in the palette. And I'm going to take the brush that it comes with and just use the, this is the nice fluffy blending kind of side. So I'm going to take that with Chip In and apply it all over to my crease. As I'm putting the brush into the shade, there is some kick up and some fallout. And that's pretty much the usual with Lorac eyeshadows, at least the ones that I've had. So I'm gonna just gonna take it and tap off the excess. Like you see the mess that you're getting when you tap off the excess. You see that highlight? It's blinding. It is so blinding. I really want to try these pink shades on the lower row here. So I'm going to be taking Inner Beauty with the same blending brush. I love light pink crease color shades. They're so pretty. And it's they're a great alternative if you don't want to use the tans. Like a you know, your beige browns kind of shades. I think that looks really pretty in the crease. It's not too crazy pigmented, but I'm pretty sure that you can build it up. Ooh, this is going to be one colorful look. That actually looks really nice. It did build up and blend really nicely in the crease. I like it. Next shade I'm going to be taking is TikTok, which is this one right here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that further into the crease just to darken it up just a little bit. That one actually darkened it up really nice. It darkened it up really nice. I can't talk too fast, otherwise I will stutter my words and it's been a long time since I've filmed, so bear with me. Next, I'm just gonna go back with my first crease brush and just blend it all out. I actually appreciate how soft the brush head is because I was afraid it was going to be like a scratchy kind of brush. All right, now to deepen up the crease, I'm going to be taking the shade Romance, which is this one right here. I don't know what it is about just burgundy shades that I'm so drawn to. I'm gonna take the other side of the brush and deepen up the crease. Now it's gonna go in the outer corner and into the crease. It's a beautiful shade. I feel like this shade is really staying true to burgundy because I feel like dark shades like this, when I apply them, they tend to darken and they don't really look like a burgundy shade. But then again, time will tell if the eyeshadow like sick it dark. Sometimes that happens to me. Just the combination of the pink with the burgundy, I'm already loving it. Before I move on to the lid shade, I'm gonna hit the lower lash line with the same colors that I did in the crease. And going back in with my blending brush and just making sure all the colors are blended into each other. For the lid shade, I'm going to be taking Timekeeper, which is this one up here. It looks like a nice taupey kind of silver, which is not a color that I use very often, but I thought it would be nice to pair it with the shades that I have going on in the crease. So I'm going to take a flat shader brush. I'm going to take this brush by Sigma. It is the E57 Firm Shader. There's not too much fallout when I put it into the um, satin eyeshadow, but there is once I tap off the brush. Oh, well, that is a beautiful shade. I feel like... The gold highlight is just not going with the taupe eyeshadow. That's okay. We'll just roll with it. Why not? It reminds me of a gray, but when I swatched it, it looks like a taupe. I put my hair up because it's getting in the way, but the eyeshadow on the lid is just stunning. I love it. I'm going to apply just a little bit more, but just by wetting the brush a little bit to see how intense I can get it. It definitely comes out a little more intense. So I'm going to go back into my crease and the outer corner just to touch up the color that was covered a little bit by the eyeshadow. All right, so we are done with the eyeshadow. I'm going to apply some liner and some mascara and lashes, and I will be right back. Oh, wait, before I go, I wanted to highlight my inner corner and my brow bone, but I'm realizing that there's not really a shade light enough. I see one here called Dream It. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I wasn't sure if there was a uh, shadow in here that was light enough to highlight the inner corner and the brow bone, but I just watched Dream It and that looks like it's gonna be a good match. So I'm gonna do that and take that shade and highlight the inner corners and the brow bone. That is beautiful. I do love this shade for highlighting. I think it's 
gorgeous. All right, so liner, mascara, and lashes are on. I went with a little bit of a simple eyelash look because I still wanted to see the eyeshadow come through. Next, we're going to try out the lipsticks, and I don't know which one I want to use, but they all look so beautiful, and the packaging is so cute. They're actually upside down in the packaging. I just noticed that. I will be showing you close-up swatches of each individual shade. The Lush Moderate Coverage Mod Cream Lipstick turns all eyes to the pout and sets our heroine up for a beauty look strong enough to steady a beast. Okay. What's a princess worthy look without the lip color to finish it? I kind of want to go with a red just because I'm bold like that. I love bold shades. So I'm going to go with this red right here. Look at the packaging. It is so pretty. I love everything about the packaging. It's gold. It has the roses just drawn on it. It's so pretty. So I'm going to take the lipstick Red Rose and I'm going to apply that. Oh, such a beautiful shade. These lipsticks have the scent that we've always known for Lorac lipsticks to have. Wow. Definitely messy with my swatches, apparently. This is such a beautiful shade. And they're so moisturizing, too. Nothing on the teeth. I'm not sure if it goes with this look, but I just decided to be bold and daring and just put this one on. It is beautiful. So this is the final look. What do you guys think? I think I like the shadows a lot. And I already like this lipstick a ton and I will be showing you guys swatches of everything throughout the video and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the look and my review on this collection I didn't get every single thing because like I said when I saw the lip glosses they didn't really excite me because they're not as pigmented as their normal lip glosses are and I have a ton of lip glosses I have a ton of lipsticks and eyeshadow palettes and blush palettes but I still wanted this collection so this collection first released on the Lorac website and I waited because I wanted this collection to hit Ulta and it did and so that's where I got my entire collection was the Ulta website. Let me know if you got your hands on any one of these pieces in this collection. I would love to know your thoughts. Please let me know what you think down in the comment section below and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to me if you will. It would mean so much to me. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time I will talk to you guys soon. Bye!